Welcome back to Escape Man Watch. I'm your host, Falling Titan, and today we have a watch that's not handmade, but some parts of it are. I'll show you in the video. It's Honey, really. Yes? Uh, what's that $500 uh, on the credit card bill? $500 on the credit card bill. I don't know. What does it say on the description? Uh, S A R B 033. S A R B 033. Did you buy another watch? No, I did not. Sarb 033. Oh, it's the security authorized resident benefit. It's a new government tax. Oh, okay. That makes sense. It does? Oh, yes, it does make sense. Oh, and next month there's a SARB 035. We have to pay that one too. Anyways, let's get into it. Thank you to Kavar Jewelers for letting us check out this piece. He has two left and they are for sale. International shipping, uh, 2050 USD. But check down below in the description for my email. Let me know if you want this and I'll give you a discount code. All right, let's get into it. Quick unboxing, it's just a sleeve within another sleeve. I already took that one out. And there it is. The Seiko Presage Limited Edition. Seiko made only 2,000 of these pieces. So, sounds like a lot, but in the Seiko world, it's not too many. Beautiful box, nice wood, soft padded leather on the top, gold printing, limited edition presage. And there she is. Okay guys, this watch has the purest and whitest dial you'll ever see. It is Arita Porcelain. It is amazing. I had to play with my camera to try to get what I'm seeing here to what you guys are seeing. So hopefully your settings on your computer or TV or whatever you're watching on it doesn't have any fancy filters or HDR settings or high contrast or whatever. And hopefully you see that pure white dial. Very tough for me to film and photograph. Just letting you guys know. Now Seiko puts the buckle, it's supposed to be on the top, right? We're all used to that. But as you can see, the 12 is down there. Anytime they have a deployment, deployment clasp, they put it at the bottom. Drives me nuts, but apparently that's how it's supposed to be. Um, <laughs> let me know down in the comments. Is Seiko doing it right <laughs> or are they doing it wrong? It feels wrong to me, but anyways. <laughs> So let's quickly just talk about the movement here. The movement, 6R27. 6R27, 29 joules, 28,800 VPH. So it's uh, what well, people call it high beat, but I call it medium beat. Like the Swiss movements, like Rolex, like the ETAs, you're gonna get that nice smoother sweep than that typical Seiko 21,600 VPH. Can you guys tell the beat difference? On the typical Seiko movements, it's a little bit more jagged. And here it's gonna be a little bit more smooth. We have more joules and a higher frequency, higher beat. You're gonna get a nicer sweep. So this one has 45 hours of power reserve. The 6R15 that we're used to has 50 hours. And this one has a little bit more tricks up its sleeve. It shows the date uh, with a hand instead of a typical date window with the white box and, a, and the number. All right, so that's a little bit more elegant. And then we have a power reserve indicator. As you can see, it's about 20 hours left right now. So it's a non-screw down crown. If I wind it, that hand will go up. Let's see if we can do it. Ultra smooth winding. I love this movement. The mid-tier Seiko movement. I believe the 6R27, one of the best ones. Look at it. Power reserve is almost full. We're going to want it full for when we put it on the time grapher. I love that. I don't have to guess. Did I wind enough? Is it full? That's amazing. I love it. I think they should do more of that. Maybe not on the front if you don't like the look, but I think it looks good here. Maybe put it on the back. And there's that nice rotor with 
the Coats de Geneve, I believe, and gold printing Seiko on it. Very nice. So my favorite six R movement, because it's high beat, more jewels, five extra jewels, and uh, 45 hour power reserve, doesn't get affected by isochronism like this one. If I put this down for two days, it's always super fast, but on the wrist every day, zero seconds a day. Uh, I don't know. So I prefer one of these with a little bit shorter uh, power reserve. Just, this is my favorite movement. Unless we get into the higher end, the 6L. All right, so look, the case shape, let's check out the case shape. It kind of reminds me of an Oyster case. Very similar to Rolex. Has a l very smooth cut and curvature to the lugs. Very high polish, hard to film. There's a little bit of a brushing around the bezel right there. And it catches the light and then it goes back to high polish on the top of the bezel. Crystal sticks out just a little bit. It is domed and has anti-reflective coating. You can see that stainless steel chapter ring glistening and reflecting. Unbelievable. We got the sign crown with the beautiful Seiko S. You can always line it up because it's not screwed down. See? You can put it however you want. There we go. <laughs> Very nice. Beautiful case. It is a little bit thick. We're gonna check out the measurements. I think it's thick because of the porcelain. I'm gonna show you guys the porcelain and uh, how it's made. 14.4. Yep. Seiko says it's 14.1. And lug to lug, 47.5. Very nice lug to lug. And this should be 20. Yes. And the diameter should be 40.5. So 40 mils and a half. All right, showing 41. Am I doing that right? Is it calibrated perfectly? It's saying negative, but all right. So 40.8, Seiko says 40.5 almost 41 millimeters. It's a, it's a great size. It's going to have a lot of wrist presence. I love the lugs, how they curve so nicely this way, but then they kind of kick outwards, kind of like how a goalie <laughs> stands, you know, a goalie stands in hockey and his legs are like this <laughs> kind of looks like that. If you see it, if I can get it to focus there. So it curves in and then Curves out. Very nice dramatic curvature to the case. It is very beautiful. Now, these watches are very quietly sophisticated. They're not show, show off pieces. You buy this watch because you love watchmaking. You love horology. And it's not handmade, but there's a little bit more hands touching it. When you see, I probably already showed the video when I'm editing it. When you see how they make the porcelain dial, I believe it is thick and it's tough to make. Seiko breaks a lot of them while making them. Probably why the price is a little bit higher. And then when, um, yeah, I think it adds about two mils. That's, that's, that's what it looks like from when I see the dials being made. But when they harden it and if they make it perfect, the dial is basically indestructible. I don't think it's ever going to spider or crack even in, I don't know, 20 years. The porcelain has a very wet and glossy look, which is very beautiful. It's hard to display, but we're going to try. I'm going to get some macros. It's just stunning and it's uh, beautiful and it's restrained. It's a different approach to watchmaking, which I like, and uh, it shows craftsmanship. And I'm impressed by it. I kept seeing it in the display window at Kavar Jewelers. And I said, that thing is so beautiful. It always just catches my eye. What is it? I have to review it. And then I found out it is a presage. So very stunning watch. Anyone who has this watch, ah, you guys are lucky. The porcelain dial. You can see it here. Where is it? Probably say it on one of these. 18 tags. 
There we go. Arita porcelain. I believe it's an area in Japan where they used to make porcelain for since 1830. So it's an ancient tradition and it's, it's amazing. It's cool to have a little bit of history on your wrist like that. We got that sapphire crystal with anti-reflective coating on the underside. We got the blued hands. I'm not sure if they're actually blued with heat, but I believe they are. I couldn't find any info on it, but they look amazing. I'm trying to get, see how it reflects the light? That's <laughs> really nice. Oh man. And the, not the bracelet, sorry. The strap is crocodile leather and it's ultra soft, especially right here. But then it, they add padding right there. As you can see, it's thicker. So where the padding is at the top, you got to break that in. You got to wear it and break that in. But here, ultra soft, ultra pliable. It's just where they added that foam for comfort. That has to be broken in. That's going to take a while. But once it is broken in, this strap is amazing. The clasp, the deployment clasp is amazing. It's all milled and it, it closes really nice. Ah, I'm on the, <laughs> the cloth, so you can't hear it. Let's see if we can hear it close. There we go. Solid feel, feels better than my Alpinist, uh, the new Alpinist that I, um, that came with a deployment clasp. Looks the same though. I wanted to check them out, but how come this one feels way nicer? I don't know. So because of how it closes and how it feels, I do believe they are different, even though they look the same. All right. Now I can compare it with this 63 mass. It looks pretty much the same. Yep. The 63 mask kind of, does it look bigger to you guys? Hmm. I don't know. They're both technically the same 40.5 according to the specs. So exact same size watch. <laughs> Very nice. This is a nice two piece collection, a beautiful diver and a beautiful dress watch which uh, is a little bit special. Oh, and these are both limited edition. I just realized that. Yep, 5,500 pieces and the porcelain, 2,000 pieces. Very nice. Let's check out the weight, guys. When you're wearing a dress watch, the weight matters. You don't want a really heavy piece weighing you down. All right, we're zeroed. Ninety five grams under a hundred grams. Excellent. I always hold it like this because of the buckle and it's supposed to be hold, held like this. I don't know. I would change that. First thing I would do is flip the bracelets. I mean, sorry, strap. All right. What's the power reserve at? We're still at full. Excellent. Now this is not a quick release, so you're going to have to be good with the spring bar tool. Links down below to get your Bergeon spring bar tool. It's about 25 bucks. Get it from Amazon. It's amazing. If you're going to have a chance to not scratch your watch, the Bergeon is going to give you your best chance. Whoa, that higher beat, eh? Interesting. I'm curious to see if it actually is 28.8, like they say. <laughs> it sounds like it is. Yep, 288 VPH, beautiful. Plus two seconds, 300 amplitude, 0.2 V error, amazing. I don't believe Seiko regulates this, it's just performing amazing. Wow, excellent numbers. Wish the V error was down to uh, point, point 0.1 at least, or zero even better, but you can't complain with those numbers. Plus four seconds a day. 300 amplitude. Well, now it's at 299. Amazing. Okay, so the movement is a winner, just like I predicted. 6R27, the favorite in the lower ish tier Seikos. And then the 6L, which is that new movement, would probably be my pick for middle tier before we get into the 8L, the high tier Seikos, the Marine Masters plus three seconds. 
This is very good. Plus two seconds. Okay, if we kept this here for the half an hour that it should be kept, it's probably going to do even better. Very nice movement. The line is the line is pretty straight. Very good. Okay, so let's... We did... The, oh, we can't do the loom shot. <laughs> there is no loom on this sweet dress watch. Of course, dress watches are not supposed to have loom. I know the Sarbi 035 and 033, they have loom, <laughs> which we love. But in something like this, uh, you know, you don't really want the loom. It's just beautiful on its own with those Roman numerals amazing and it's got the watchmaker 4 which is cool that's not the normal roman numeral for the number 4 that's called the watchmaker's 4 it just looks better it's awesome glad that Seiko put that on guys check out this watch one of my favorite presages love the movement love the little bit of hand touches with that porcelain very unique very beautiful. It's definitely a stunner. A little bit thick for my tastes, but I, I think that's due to the porcelain. I've seen 6R movements in watches under 13, so it's not the movement uh, like a lot of people think. It's just the design of the watch. Now, this has 100 meters water resistance, so very high for a dress watch. You're going to be able to swim in it. I don't recommend it. Well, like, why would you? Because it's got the... <laughs> You know this unless you put it on a rubber which uh i would not so but in case it gets wet you're good to go you're safe no worries there so if you like this video please like share and subscribe and i'll see you in the next one